Hotep, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. So if everybody's doing well today, hey, it is uh, Saturday, December 14th, 2019, and we are live. So everybody share this broadcast on your uh, Facebook page, share this on YouTube as well. I invite your friends to tune in. So I know a lot of people ask me about advertising with the African History Network and you know on the uh, audio podcast of our broadcast you, you hear the ads there and um, you uh, hear me talk about certain businesses through the Facebook Live broadcast that I do as well. So we have a, a special promotion uh, going on right now that you can take advantage of. African American business owners, uh, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast also. But uh, email me at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have a special promotion. Buy one month, get two months free. Buy one month, get two months free of advertising with the African History Network. So if you have an e-commerce store, if you have a brick and mortar store, uh, if you sell uh, uh, African garb, you sell clothing targeting African Americans, you have African American owned business, you want to advertise with the African History Network. Whatever we, um, whatever we buy, we should sell. Whatever we buy, we should sell. So you may uh, sell clothing, shoes, uh, health and beauty products, which is really big. Uh, we know that more and more women are um, wearing natural hairstyles as well. So if you have, um, if you sell African American hair products, especially those. Uh, pertaining to natural hairstyles. You definitely want to advertise with the African History Network. I just did the uh, broadcast a few days ago dealing with how um, African American women are six times more likely to develop breast cancer from using permanent hair dyes and using hair straighteners, hair relaxers. Okay, uh, If you are a book author, uh, you have a uh, books that target the African American community, whether they're, they're history books, motivation, etc. If you have an on if you uh, have an online bookstore or if you have a brick and mortar bookstore, okay, you definitely want to advertise with us. Education services are big. We know uh, a lot of African American parents are looking towards homeschooling or looking for um, educational books they can use to enhance the public school education of their children attend as well or, that ch or their children are getting also. Um, conferences that are coming up in 2020. So we know in uh, 2020 people are looking to take their African American owned business to the next level. But there will be conferences, conferences during African American History Month, um, educational conferences, things like that. We know Kwanzaa is coming up. So people are looking for ways to promote their Kwanzaa events, etc. So email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So we uh, promote businesses through our Facebook Live broadcast, and we put them on our YouTube channel as well, but also in the audio podcast of our various broadcasts. Our Sunday night show, the African History Network show, which I do Sundays 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and I've been doing the African History Network show in various formats for uh, it'll be 10 years in April of 2020. It'll be 10 years of me doing radio. But we take your 30 second and 60 second commercial, put it into the audio podcast of our various broadcasts. We're on eight different audio podcast platforms. We're on Blog Talk Radio, CastBox, Stitcher, uh, Acast, FM Player, TuneIn. And uh, we take your 30-second and 60-second commercial, put it into the broadcast. You can send us a um, commercial, that an audio com audio commercial that uh, uses uh, non-copywritten music. Okay, number one, if you can't have Cardi B or Nicki Minaj playing in the in the commercial, right? Non-copywritten music. And if you don't have a uh, commercial. You can send us a script. I can record one for you or send me bullet points. I can put together a script for you as well. All right. And then also in the uh, Facebook live broadcast I do throughout the week, we promote um, our businesses, our advertisers in those commercials, in, in those um, Facebook live broadcasts also. All right. So and we take those Facebook live broadcasts, put them on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P as well. So you get 
exposure on different uh, platforms. All right. So uh, African American owned businesses, uh, African American owned uh, African American business owners, I should say, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Then also email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, and uh, we'll let you know about our current promotion. We have a few spots left. Uh, buy one month, get one month free. Uh, and if you may have a catering service, you may own a restaurant, you may sell African jewelry, you may be in the fitness industry, you have a fitness website, personal trainer, you know, there are all different types of industries that we're in, all different types of businesses that we have, okay? And a lot of people are looking at how do I target the African American community, how do, you know, they're looking for low-cost ways to advertise their business. Um, so some people may say, well, look, I want to take advantage of this, but... Uh, I won't be able to. Uh, I won't be able to start really advertising until February or January or March or something like that. You can uh, secure your ad spots today, and then start running your ads when maybe your promotion starts or when you get the inventory in. Because we have, I have some clients that do that as well. Okay. So, in 2020, I think it's important for us to really focus on focus on taking our business to the next level. So I, I taught entrepreneurship for seven years. My degrees in business administration with the major in marketing. Okay, uh, managed a business consulting company for seven years also, and I, I tell African American business owners whether they took you know the classes I was t uh, teaching in the past because I taught at a community college and taught for a local nonprofit organization here in Detroit. But I encourage African American business owners to take at least one entrepreneurship class. Take at least one entrepreneurship class. Go to a um, local community college and take at least an introductory entrepreneurship class. And at a community college, the, uh, the cost per credit hour is going to be much less expensive in general than at a four-year university. All right? But the information that you learn in just a basic entrepreneurship class can save you thousands of dollars, thousands of lost dollars. It could also keep you a po quite possibly from going bankrupt, all right? Because we know the, you know, about 95% of all new businesses, 90 to 95% of all new businesses go out of business in the first five years. About 80% of African-American-owned businesses go out of business in the first two years, all right? And we also know that uh, about, right about 51% of all new businesses don't start making a profit to the third year in business. But just because they start making a profit in a, uh, start making a profit in their third year in business, does not mean the owner can actually draw a salary, because you're constantly reinvesting in the business. And when I used to do, um, when I used to work for a uh, local radio station here in Detroit about 20 years ago, I was in sales, and I would call on um, African American owned businesses. Okay. And a lot of them were startup businesses, retail, because you're 20 years ago, so we didn't have, you know, most businesses didn't have e-commerce. They weren't selling online, so it was brick and mortar stores. And I would call on a lot of new African-American-owned businesses, and, you know, they're excited. They have their, you know, they have their grand opening, and they have their store, and things like this, right? But... When I asked them about advertising, they said, well, we're going to advertise once we make some money. But a lot of times they get to that point because people didn't know that they existed. So, <laughs> you know, oftentimes, this is, this is one of the reasons why I encourage people to take an entrepreneurship class before you start investing all this money and buying, buying all this inventory for your, for your business and you really don't know what you're doing, okay? You know, you may be, you may be the best... Uh, you, you may have a bakery or you may want to open a bakery and you know you you sell the best sweet potato pies in the world you know they, they're even better than Patty LaBelle sweet potato pies right but you don't understand business management you don't understand how to manage employees you don't understand marketing okay you don't understand accounting things like that and yes you want to have an accountant I'm not saying be your own accountant but you have to understand like the numbers that your accountant is presenting to you and you got to understand the numbers that you're giving to your accountant. So, it, so the basic things about business that you have to understand is different than just managing a business. Okay, being a business owner is different than just managing a business, even though you need a certain skill set to manage a business. Because I, I managed a radio shack for five years. 
I own a business, but I've also managed multiple businesses as well. But my degree is in business administration, so I was better prepared for it. Um, and then in addition to taking classes uh, in the business school at Wayne State uh, University here in Detroit that were for my degree, I also took entrepreneurship classes as well within Wayne State's business school also. Because the, when you, if, if you have taken business courses that are designed for a business degree, those business courses are different than entrepreneurship courses. Entrepreneurship courses gear you towards being a business owner and understanding different facets of it and actually controlling, making the decisions, things like that. It's totally different. Whereas the business classes you take in the business school that are towards it for a business degree, finance degree, management, human resources, logistics, marketing, management information systems, things like that. Usually when you have, usually when you get a degree in business, there's usually a, uh, a specialization or a major. So you may major in finance, you may major in uh, marketing, etc. right? So even though you have to take basic business courses, you, you then start specializing in your major. So the, a lot of the education that you get in the business school is compartmentalized and it's just dealing with your uh, particular major. But it doesn't teach you how to own a business. The entrepreneurship classes are separate. They teach you about owning a business and operating a business that you actually own. It's a different mindset. It's a different level of responsibility. It's a different, it's different challenges that you're dealing with. It's entirely different. So oftentimes when we get into business, we're coming in at a deficit because many of our parents were not business owners. So we didn't grow up seeing those examples and grow up, you know, working in our parents' business. And then we may go work in corporate America or something like that for a number of years and start our own business but we haven't taken any entrepreneurship classes so we really understand really what it is that we're doing so I encourage people to one take at least one entrepreneurship class go to a local community college take at least one entrepreneurship class Two, read Black Enterprise magazine blackenterprise.com blackenterprise.com in Black Enterprise magazine if you can get your hands on a physical magazine I haven't seen one in years I read blackenterprise.com. They, uh, they also have an app you can download because they have a lot of good articles there targeting African-American business owners, those who want to own businesses, those who want to start businesses, those who have current businesses want to expand their business. But they also have information there for your um, business career of whether you work a nine-to-five job, what have you. Okay? Uh, so blackenterprise.com is um, a really good source okay I read articles from there every day you see we post some of the articles here also okay how's everybody doing um, so and then the other thing is is that uh, you, so you may have a, a restaurant catering service we know uh, more people are trying to be health conscious etc uh, you may sell African jewelry uh, you may have a fitness uh, website all right and then you may, uh, I encourage people to in, uh, invest in books that deal with uh, understanding business, things like that. So it may be Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. It may be The Wealth Choice by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Uh, it may be, uh, there's a number of uh, books I've read dealing with business. Um, some of them deal with, uh, some of them I read in the past when I was doing business, business to sales, uh, business, business to business sales. Some of them dealt with... Um, uh, cold calling and cold calling is something I hated to do but we had to do in you know in sales I read um, books by Steve Schiffman okay Steve Schiffman was a, a guru in cold calling but I also read um, books by some of the sales gurus like Tom Hopkins Zig Ziglar Brian Tracy okay things like that so those are uh, in, in, in sales skills are some of the most important skills you can have that's like the hand-to-hand -hand combat all right and those were things that, so when I was in business school, those were things that we didn't like learn in business schools. So today you have, um, today you have some 
uh, schools where you could get you can major in it's something dealing with what is it personal sales or something like that so uh, when I was going through business school they didn't even have that as a major personal sales I, I, I've talked to some people you know after I graduated who uh, those were majors that were offered but when I was going through business school like I graduated in 94 okay so the ink is dried uh, on the degree uh, that was not even something that was offered okay uh, but when we took entrepreneurship classes we got more experience when it came to uh, uh, sales okay personal sales so that I, I encourage people to uh, invest in that also what one thing one thing that I did years ago was I had a membership with talking book world okay talking book world and talking book world was um, Talking Book World was, they had books on tape, okay, back then it was tape, then they went to CDs. Uh, so I created, you know, I have a library of uh, books on CDs and books on tape, dealing with business, dealing with um, uh, people like uh, uh, Zig Ziglar, people dealing with, um, uh, one, one, th one of the things that I did was I studied successful people, whether they're African Americans or white. And I bought like books on CD. So Jack Welsh, who was the CEO of um, uh, General Electric, okay, I read read his book. Uh, Sumner Redstone, who was the CEO of Viacom, read his book. Uh, there was a book out uh, about Michael Jordan, read that one. Muhammad Ali, uh, Rick Pitino, the NCAA coach, he had a book out late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, read that so I also study successful people I read books and got books on tape from the sales gurus Harvey McKay uh, Zig Ziglar Brian Tracy even people like uh, uh, Les Brown which is more motivational as opposed to like focused on sales but those are those are things I'm listening. I was listening to in my car when I'm out in the field on sales calls. You know, I listen to music some, but I'm listening to things like that to, like, really keep me motivated. All right, and to really hone my skills. So, so you have to, you know, invest in yourself as well. Invest in seminars. Invest in things that are going to allow you to take your business, take your skills to the to the next level. All right, and in a lot of times people. You know, you, you also have to realize that you're worth investing in as well. So sometimes people don't think that they're worth investing in. Um, when you look at the Shark Tank, for instance, you know, one example that, uh, it, you know, a lot of people start businesses and they think the, biz, they think the money is going to come in much faster than it actually comes in oftentimes, right? And... They don't realize that it takes years in general for your business to grow to the point where you can draw a salary that was commensurate to the salary that you were getting at your nine to five job. Okay. Especially if you want to get benefits through your business, things like that, healthcare, et cetera, right? So I always like to give the example. If you watch the TV show The Shark Tank. Shark Tank is a good show. I like Shark Tank. Shark Tank, as well as The Prophet. Prophet on CNBC. Prophet with Marcus Lamanis. And, and, and Marcus Lamanis uh, is a, a businessman. He's a business developer. But he go, what he does is he goes into businesses that are um, doing poorly, okay, on the verge of going out of business, things like this. And he turns, he turns the businesses around. And he talks about the three Ps, the Prophet, he talks about the, the people, the product, and the process. The people, the product, and the process, okay? He may say it in a different order, but it's the same thing. But when you look at Shark Tank, um, a lot of times on Shark Tank, you'll have people who have, um, they'll have a fantastic idea, fantastic business. Business could be in business six months, a year, two years, three years, four years, right? But... Once you get past the valuation, valuation dealing with um, the actual value of the business, and they say how, what percentage they're willing to give the sharks for a certain amount of money, 
uh, a certain amount of investment, right? A lot of these businesses, you find out that the owners are not taking a salary. They'll have employees. They may have been in business two, three, four, five, six years. But you find out that the owners are not taking a salary. So, and, and oftentimes they're white. And they started out with more startup capital than most of us start out with. A lot of them start out with more startup capital, capital than the average African American business does in annual revenue. Because the average African American owned business, average revenue is about $56,000 a year. Four million African American owned businesses. Revenue's been cut basically in half. Uh, Forbes.com had a uh, a good article uh, recently that talked about uh, uh, African American female business owners and, and the good, the bad. I think it was Forbes. Let me pull this up. I think it was Forbes. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, something like that. The good, the bad, not. Okay, well, okay, this, this, okay. It was called The Good and Not So Good News. All right, I'm thinking of. Good, the bad, the ugly movie. Okay, not calling black women ugly. That's not. <laughs> that's not what I was saying. <laughs> I want people to misinterpret that. <laughs> All right, black women entrepreneurs. Okay, the good and not so good news. But one of the things when, when you study this, right? We went from um, 1.9 million African American owned businesses in uh, 2007 to 2.6 million African American owned businesses in 2012 to 4 million African-American-owned businesses today. But what happened is, is that the annual revenue was cut basically in half. It went for something like $106,000 in annual revenue per business uh, in 2012. Now it's, now it's about $56,000, okay, annual revenue, 54, 56,000. So it's basically been cut in half. So you got twice as, twice as many businesses as one uh, 2007 but the revenue has been cut in half so what do you really gain and so check out this article here um and, and, and the other interesting thing is that 2.4 million of the 4 million african-american owned businesses are owned by women and a lot of these women are cre a lot of, a lot of african-american women are creating businesses so they can um, subsidize the fact that they're making about 61 cents on every dollar that the average white male makes at the nine to five job. So a lot of them are starting businesses, not so they can quit their nine to five job, but to subsidize the fact that they're underpaid at their nine to five job. So because a lot of them are doing their, their business part time, okay, under 39 hours a week. And, you know, if you've seen some of my previous broadcasts with Black Women's Equal Pay Day, that deals with African-American women making 61 cents on every dollar that the average white male makes. So it takes the average African-American woman 20 months to make the same amount of money that it takes the average white male 12 months to make. All right. How's everybody doing? Okay. So uh, African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Uh, email us at customerservice at africanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network current promotion uh, uh, buy one month get two months free it's going on for a few more days we have a few spots uh, uh, still available and we'll, uh, so you email us we'll let you know how you can get up and running today uh, let's see who we have here we got Beverly um, okay Beverly True sentiments. We create products, tools, and resources that promote mindfulness with the cultural flavor. Okay, that sounds good. Demetra, be sure to email us, Beverly. Demetra, okay, am I familiar with five links? Uh, I, I, I remember that I think they sold cell phone services, five links, right? Because mo most of the multi level marketing uh, companies, I've been in their meetings because I've been in sales, some aspect of sales going back probably to 92, I think it is. So it's probably about 27 years deep, 92, 94, because uh, I was working on projects in uh, in college. Uh, so a lot of the different multi-level marketing uh, companies I've had some exposure to. 
okay we've got uh, Kim Antoine uh, uh, Sheila Latoya just a few people watching okay we got Yolanda Spivey all right everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page as well be sure to follow us here on our uh, Facebook fan page the African History Network the African History Network on our YouTube channel Michael M Hotep I M H O T E P as well on different uh, platforms and then also on eight different uh, podcast platforms so wherever you get your audio podcast from search for the African History Network show the African History Network show We're on uh, blog talk radio iTunes cast box stitcher FM player tune in just to name a few all right um, Okay, uh, Beverly, check your email. I did email you back. Check your spam, check your spam folder, uh, Beverly. I got your email and I emailed you back. All right. Okay, and then be sure to listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF uh, in Detroit. And then we broadcast live on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, okay? Um, and then also that Sunday night show, we're going to put that in audio podcast platform, so you'll be able to hear your your uh, ads there in the uh, Sunday night broadcast when we put it into audio podcast platform also. But uh, on Sunday show, we get uh, we got a get jam packed show Sunday. <laughs> it's going to blow you away. We got to talk about the, the Trump impeachment inquiry because the House Judiciary Committee voted on articles of impeachment on Friday morning. In January of 2017, I said that Donald Trump was going to be impeached. Okay, uh, we'll talk about that and give you a breakdown on what happened. You know, I've been covering the, the impeachment inquiry a lot. Be sure to check out uh, last Sunday's show. Also, we'll also talk about Miss Universe, Miss South Africa. Uh, Zosa Benny Tunzi is crowned uh, Miss Universe. Okay, and uh, I mean she is truly an African queen. That's some more black girl magic. And now we have uh, Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, Miss America, and Miss Universe are all uh, black women, all women of African descent. And then also uh, we'll deal with how Senator Mitch McConnell, uh, Moscow Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, bragged uh, Thursday night he was on Sean Hannity's show on Fox News. And we posted about this on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. And I've been talking about this for months months of dealing with federal judges and uh, I've been talking about how Mitch McConnell has to be voted out of office in 2020 but Senator Mitch McConnell bragged about blocking President Obama's nominations for federal judges for two years then he laughed about it. he bragged about blocking President Obama's nominations for federal judges for two years then bragged about it and then laughed about it so a lot of people don't understand the importance of the U.S. Senate and what, the, what actually the U.S. Senate does and how the rules in the U.S. Senate are different than the rules in the House of Representatives because those are two different chambers uh, of Congress. They're both in Congress, right? But those are two different chambers. They're different rules. And then also we'll talk a little bit about how R. Kelly was charged with bribing a government, has been charged with bribing a government employee. So um, Aaliyah could obtain a fake ID uh, so he could marry her back in 1994. Leah was only 15 years old, right? They talked about this um, in uh, Surviving R. Kelly. Now federal charges have recently come down. Uh, I'll talk a little briefly about um, how hair straighteners and hair dyes are linked to higher cancer risks, especially for African-American women, uh, a new study suggests. I, I did an hour and 15-minute broadcast dealing with that, so we'll check that out also if you missed that one. That's on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And also, I want, I'm going to talk a little bit about the African-American unemployment rate because it may be low, about 5.5% based upon the, the new uh, unemployment rate numbers, unemployment numbers that came out um, uh, first Friday of December. But almost half of all Americans work in low-wage jobs. Almost half of all Americans work in low-wage jobs. And this is something Donald Trump doesn't want to talk about. He doesn't want to talk about how wages are not keeping are not keeping up. Wages are not increasing like they should. All right. And then the other thing I, I did a broadcast a couple months ago dealing with this: how over the next ten years, it's expected that 4.5 million 
um, African American, uh, 4.5 million African Americans could lose, lose jobs to automation, robotics, software programs, things like this. Uh, over the next 10 years, up to 4.5 million African Americans could lose jobs to automation. All right? And this is something that's not really being talked about. BlackEnterprise.com had a really good article about this. I did a broadcast uh, about this going deeper into it. So check that out as well if you missed that one. All right, so, uh, hey, look, we have to get out of here. Uh, we got Charlene. How you doing? Okay, uh, Bud Pals, Australia, we grow with you. All right. So uh, African-American business owners, all those, especially all those that are posting, be sure to email us. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And uh, I'll respond very quickly by email. And we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. We'll get you up and running uh, today. Remember, uh, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you've been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Remember, right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace.